The first documented traces of Jewish community in Korbutsk are coming from late 1700s. There are 13 Jewish families registered uh, within the parish. By late 1800s, they are already making 40% of the population. Just before the war, the Korbutsk Jewish community is made by around 3,000 of Jews. So we're in Korbutsk in the Kulna Street, which up until World War II was called Buznicza, so the synagogue street. Uh, the architecture here is very patchy, there are still some pre-war structures above this part of the city towards the church is the market square and here in this lower part of the city was the large Jewish district so this is Bruznica street and the plot of land right now to our left behind the shrubs was exactly the piece of land where the synagogal complex of Lobotsk was located. There was a very tall synagogue, this is how it's remembered, and it was connected or it was adjacent to the nearby Mikva and Tahara house. A Jewish burial house was also located here. And this is precisely the plot of land today where the synagogue complex was located. It's contemporary in between two after war buildings in between the school and the public library, which we are looking at now. The streets going this way is called Vawova. This street appears in the sources as being inside the Nazi established ghetto in Kobutsk. So we are right now exactly on the property in the pre war Buznica Street in Kobutsk where the complex of a synagogue, mikveh and Beit Hara, the Jewish burial house, were located. The structure we are looking right now at is the public library built after the war on the same property. And the Buzhinta street in Klobutsk, nowadays Okulna, comes down to the little water creek. That's why the mikveh was just next to the synagogue, which was on the right hand side of the street. Around one mile east from the city center of Kobutsk, there is a plot of land which is the Jewish cemetery. At the same time, they place a burial of the Jews from Kamek.
So we are in the Jewish cemetery of Korbutsk, which was a central kahila, a central community for dozens of smaller state lach and villages surrounding it. Uh, mostly purely agricultural territory. Korbutsk would have a major market square and uh, in such way it became a local trading center. Klobuts would also have the local authorities, uh, both civic authorities but also religious authorities, which means Klobuts was the um, center of the local kahila. We know that the Jews of Klobuts were running an orphanage in Kamek because there were regular money allotments for that orphanage for Jewish kids. And we also know that the Jewish community of Korbutsk was uh, paying for the local rabbi. So there must have been kind of a synagogue, a shtibl in Kamek, uh, and it was Klobutsk that paid the local rabbi in Kamek. In this completely desolate cemetery, during and after World War II, there's just one matzava left. It's just this one stone devoted to a certain Rachel. As the entire family of Mishka hailed from Kamek, it means that they were administratively belonging to Kwabutsk, and that's why most of the records of births, marriages and deaths that we are finding for the Mishka family uh, were registered in Kwabutsk. This also means that all of those uh, Mishka family members who passed away in Kamek before the family moved on into Częstochowa, which means up until early 1900s, they must be buried here. They must be buried here in this cemetery. Yes, halachically, this is still a cemetery. In spite of the fact that the Matzavots are not here, the burials are still remaining in this ground. Thank you.